who don't know me, but you know. Um, I'm Fabienne. I'm working with Green Tech Capital, um, and we have an entity that is an NGO, but also or a non-profit and a for-profit. And uh, we are uh, one of the consortium partners of the Make Project. So just to make it very brief, the Make Project is about supporting the African and European makerspace ecosystem with diverse measures like um creating a maker's passport for example or a map of machinery but also via venture building and train the trainer sessions um yeah and the makers and residency program in general was uh or the the main target was to increase the collaboration between europe and africa and to bring the makers uh, respective prototype to the next level even though it was a short time uh, we knew that so it we knew it's just going to go to the next level, but um, we really wanted to have this collaboration, a mutual collaboration. And for this, we also teamed up with Volca, um, Volca Network, and they supported us heavily on finding the right makerspace for the individual maker. And um, they are very, very well connected within the European makerspace uh, ecosystem. They know them a lot. They know them by heart. They visited them. They live with their family. So we really try to make sure that the makers are in good hands. And uh, I hope that worked out. And uh, yeah, the overall target was also, of course, to learn from each other, to increase the your skills and um, use maybe new machineries, learn about new machineries to really widen your um, your ideas. And uh, yeah, so what we did was basically we um, brought four makers, first of all, to Berlin. So they were able to join the Republica as well as the gig gathering um, for a week. And then they traveled to their respective makers bases in Belgium, France and Spain. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for uh, the general introduction. Sorry. And now I would actually um, would like witness to introduce herself and to um, explain or show a little bit more about her residency, what she liked, what she was working on, um, where she traveled to, etc. Yeah, stage is yours, witness. Thank you, Fabian. Hi, everyone. My name's a witness, Shangali has introduced, and I am from Tanzania in a makerspace called Twende. I traveled to Eco Varenne Eco Center in France, where I worked on the project called Dugali Maker, a machine that cooks our staple food, since uh, it's the most consumed food in schools. And we worked, we worked on it with the Fab Lab in the Eco Center with the help of Matthew and the other team members to come up with a way that we could modify it because the prototype that we worked on had some little challenges. So we started building another one to see how we are going to overcome the challenges we faced in the first one. Time was short, but we at least had the frame and some parts that um, were connected to the frame, but it wasn't complete for us to test. So everything else went well, just had the challenge with the language because most of them spoke French, but the Fab Lab had, new, had machines that are advanced and I got to use some depending on the project I was working on. I tried to learn how to use them. And that yeah, is okay. one among the knowledge I received at the Fab Lab. And 
so I came back with the prototype. We we made it in a way that it was easy for me to transport it back so that as I'm in here, we could also keep collaborating in modifying it as we work on it here with my team in Tanzania. Thank you. Thank you, witness. Maybe you can explain a little bit more about the background of your project. Um, what was the target? What kind of machinery have you used for it? Was it new machinery? Um, what kind of new skills have you learned? Um, what your prototype is for? Things like that. You can also share your screen if you have something. Um. So with the machine, it's a... Uh... As I said, it's for cooking the one of the staple food here in Tanzania. So the challenge that made us come up with that idea, it's in school, especially boarding schools, they cook for differ for almost 500 students. And in one saucepan, they have two cooks that are going to be working on cooking the food to prepare it. So the process is a bit tiresome and sometimes it's not in a good consistency in terms of test and it being ready for consuming. That's what led us to come up with the project, with the design and working on the prototype. And um, among the machines that I tried using that was new, it's the MIG welding machine. Because mostly here in the maker space, we use the one that uses the sticks, but not the MIG one. So that was something new that I tried. Also, the use of lesser cutter. For this one, we used it to prepare a sketch of the one of the plate that was needed in the machine before cutting before cutting the actual material that we were going to use in the machine to ensure that it aligns well with what we were supposed to use it for. Um, yeah, those are the two machines that were new to me that I used. Also. I don't have anything prepared to share right now. So that is all from me. <laughs> no problem. Maybe one more question is um, what in general have you learned? And maybe what were also the challenges except for the um, language barrier sometimes that you were facing? Um. One of the challenge was um, time limit because with the project that I'm working on, we can't just go direct to starting welding, cutting and all that. We first had to do some sketches to ensure that what we are going to do next is going to be according to the good good arrangement or good preparation before we start working on the actual materials. So we used most of the time in trying to figure out how we are going to modify the areas that needed more consideration when working on, when designing to see how they are all going to be connected well. Also, the other challenge was I didn't I don't know much of the computer drawing, so they had to slowly teach me as we work. Um, at least now I can do some of the sketches myself, but not in a good way as it's supposed to be. And something else is about. I loved the arrangement of the maker space, though they were still working on moving to the new building, but still we had access to the machines that I needed to use for the prototype. 
also the way they organized whenever the whenever Matthew wasn't around he made sure that there's someone else who is going to take care of me to ensure that we keep working on the project so that we could accomplish what was supposed to, that what we could accomplish in that period of time okay thank you and uh, actually, now that you started talking about the makerspace uh, itself, maybe you can explain a little bit more what your makerspace made special because it was an old military base, right? So it was a huge area. Um, yeah, it's a huge area. And the where they're trying to move in, which is not complete yet when I arrived, it's near their offices. But the one they used before is a bit far from the offices. But everything, despite that they they packed most of the things so that because they were supposed to move in June before I arrived. So the how they designed the interior, despite the fact that outside you see most of the old buildings, but in the interior when you enter, it's all well organized, the arrangement of things, the placement of the machines. Also, they labeled that this area contains this machine, maybe the CNC machine and the laser cutter. This one contains the 3D printers. They also made sure because those are most of the machines that were used currently when I arrived. So everything was in order that you could easily find what you needed. If it's you want to use a clamp, it's easily accessible because they had a, like a frame that is inserted with all the G clamps that you need. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, your makerspace was a bit more on the countryside, right? Um, <laughs> And uh, since it was this big makerspace, um, how was your community feeling there? Did they welcome you warmly? Um, did they support you well? Yeah. Yes, they welcomed me well, supported me. And on weekends, because as you know, I didn't know most of the places and most of them spoke French. They also arranged for different days for different people from the makerspace to take me around the city. I mean, the place that were near there that I could visit. So everything felt welcoming because I, I wasn't like bored staying during the weekends when we are not working, staying all alone. They prepared a way that I could visit some of the areas like um once we went for a museum that is all about vessels <laughs> but at least it was something interacting not to be not to feel bored or something like that so they had that way of making sure that if i needed to rest they'll i would just tell them that this weekend maybe i i'll just need to stay here and do something else but if I wasn't staying alone, then they would arrange for someone to take me to a place that is nearby and visit. So everything felt very welcoming. And at least some spoke English a little bit. So it was easy for me to communicate direct to them and they would explain it to others so that the, the communication would be easy. Thank you, witness. Um, yeah, maybe um, I could give the questions to the other ones in the call, if you have any to witness about the residency, or Fadia, if you have something. I maybe would ask um, witness one step uh, before the residency, what was your motivation to apply for the residency in the first place? And whether or not this, the initial motivation was met or your initial expectations were met during the residency? 
Um, one of the things that made me interested in applying for the residence, it's the I had a spirit with my team because I didn't apply myself. Also, one of my partner in the team also applied. We wanted to have the exposure that will help us in modifying the current challenges we are facing in the project. So we thought that by getting the chance, either one of us to get the chance to be in the Mecca and residence would have that knowledge and would come and help us, help us in the team so that we could improve and later on take the project into market because we have not yet started marketing. And after getting into the residence and being in the makerspace in the fab lab, I at least, because we did not finish and test the project, I wouldn't say that my expectations were met 100%, but at least they, they've given me light that I can share with my team here and we can try and modify to see how we are going to take it forward from what we I learned so that we could take the project into the market. Do you feel like uh, you got closer to this during your time? Were you exposed to that kind of knowledge? Sorry, please come again. I'm just wondering if the residency met that expectation. Yes, because there are some of the things that we did with the there that we can integrate it either into the into the prototype that we it's already working here so that we could just improve on the few things that wanted improvement. Thank you. And Andrew, please go. Hi, witness. Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations on being selected for the Maker and Residency and, and, and working on that. Um, I used to run an exchange program uh, with engineers going to African countries. It's really important to me that African people, African engineers can come in this direction as well. Um, what effect do you think you had on the French people, <laughs> the French makers in your maker space? And what do you think, um, what effect do you think you had on them, but also in terms of them having a better understanding of your world, perhaps? Is there, do you think there was a, a greater understanding reached? Thank you. Sorry, please come again. Yeah, the, what effect did you have on them? And do you think that they have a better understanding of Twende and of Tanzania because of it? Because of the maker and residency? Um, I'm not sure if I got your question correctly, but with the way with that we worked um, and some of them had like, for instance, there's one person who told me that one of their relatives visited Tanzania and they were like, we would also like to visit Tanzania. So with the way that I presented everything, including how we worked on the, trying to tell them so that they could understand about the project that I'm working on, and how we do it in the makerspace here in Tanzania. I think it made them also see that they would love to see that we make something that is working for us here in Tanzania, considering the availability of the materials here in Tanzania, so that we don't have to like, ship most of the materials from there. So they were interested in how we use the local available materials here in Tanzania to come up with something like the project that I did. 
Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really important point. It's an area that I'm quite interested in, is adapting designs to be to the local context and making sure you can make them with local materials. I would imagine that you've also built some from some relationships and friendships and some solidarity um, with people there. And I imagine in France now, there's a number of people, as you've said, who would like to visit Twende one day. Great yes. stuff. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions from you guys? Does not seem like it. Then thanks a lot, Witness, for sharing your experience. And uh, let's move to Asen. <laughs> Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Asen Kamal. I am a maker and uh, a YouTuber slash content creator from Giza, Egypt. Uh, my work mainly uh, revolves around making or fabricating products, different products like from wood and metal and maybe on sewing machine and documenting the whole process of making this project and then publish it on YouTube and other uh, social media platforms. So the aim of my work is to uh, like spread the DIY or the maker uh, movement in Egypt and encourage like uh, people like me to, to start their uh, DIY projects. So I was part, part of the MIR program. Uh, and uh, I went to the, the first thing, uh, I went to uh, the, uh, the first week of, uh, of the program or in, in Republica. Um, and then I, I went to south, Southern France in a, in a, a fab lab called uh, Recotech in Southern France. It's completely different than uh, the place that I am working here in Giza. It's much quieter. Uh, here it's much louder and uh, much chaotic. So the transition was a, a little bit uh, not shocking, but surprising to me. Uh, so the project I worked on is a, a wall calendar, like a smart wall calendar that you can uh, track uh, the tasks and uh, everything you can make. And you can visually see uh, the improvement you have made on uh, on, throughout the year. So uh, part of the, the aim uh, that I was wanted to do in this uh, uh, residency is to, to have uh, a quick ideas uh, about Arduino and coding, because all of my work is relatively about uh, wood and metal and everything. Um, sorry. Sam, can you still hear us? Ah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, where, what I was talking about, yeah, about coding. So, my 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 work is mainly about woodworking and building furniture, which which is very physical. And I was always curious to learn uh, about coding and Arduino and how can I embed this in uh, one of my projects. So, uh, the calendar is uh, like a, a typical calendar. But I, I try to embed like LEDs and uh, coding in it to, to create like a, a feedback from the, the calendar. So this was one of the main uh, uh, objective of this um, residency. So I work uh, for four weeks in the in the in the fab lab. Um, yeah, the the time was a bit tight. So we finished the the hardware part in in like three and three weeks and it was only the last week was for coding. So it was not, uh, uh, it wasn't a, a, a lot of time. Um, yeah. So uh, what else? Yeah, the people there was very, very nice. Uh, and I felt like in home, I didn't feel like uh, a stranger or something. So it, it, it was a, a relatively small uh, team of, of three. So yeah, um, definitely the, they were all speaking uh, English, so the communication was uh, relatively good. But 
the other the whole other town that I was in, no one speaks English. So it was a, a bit tough for me to to communicate. Even at the supermarket, everyone, the, no one was speaking English. So it it was a bit hard at the beginning. But yeah, I I I, I tried to 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 communicate with sketchers and stuff. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, I covered uh, most of the the introduction. If you have any question or or, or something. Yeah, maybe instead of me asking a lot of questions, <laughs> maybe you can go first. Um, so feel free. Me? No, I mean the group, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can ask the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually have something to share with us? Um, because... Have you produced a video of your stay already? As you mentioned, you're um, also doing YouTube videos. Is there something no, you share already or is this planned? I have like, photos, but I, I didn't film the whole thing because I was so intimidating because it's a new country. So I didn't take <laughs> cameras or tribals or any gears with me. So I just took a, a, a photo so I can share, if I can share it with you, like sharing is not turned on. So if, uh, if uh, Nadia can... So I have like a random photos of the of the stay. Oh, so you cannot share, Fadia? Can you um, give him access? And I would love to have access okay. to the YouTube as well. I I didn't get the YouTube in the beginning because it it cracked here the connection. But I would love to have the YouTube slash what. I don't think I have I, I understand what you have said, but you you look you seemed excited about YouTube. Is this what? <laughs> no, your channel because you record YouTube videos, right? About yes. making. Yeah, I I would like to get the link for your channel. You know because I, I believe very much in this YouTube yeah, I, I, making space educational frontier. Yeah, I can share it with you right now and gain a new subscriber and click on the bell you can read okay. my... yeah, exactly. you know the whole the whole business so but first let me share the the, the screen yes yeah so this this was the whole uh, photos of the visit the first thing we did is we went to the um, the material shop uh, because uh, not all the materials were, was available. So it was an, a nice experience to go and see um, how how does the the materials uh, you you bring it from. So it's 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 quite different than uh, here in Egypt. So here, for example, the the guy who who cut the acrylic have like a very fancy or a very uh, nice uh, circular saw that cuts the, the, the acrylic to size, so it was really nice. Um, yeah, at the first we started, like, I sat with Olivier, which is uh, the, the, the maker space manager, and did like uh, a, a run for to um, to calculate how, how, what's the materials we want, how can we resource it in one day, not to you know, not to, to waste time. Yeah, we also, so this was the first time I tested the, the LEDs. Excuse my internet, my slow internet. So this is the, the back LEDs that will light the, the whole thing. I, uh, uh, let me show for the, 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 the finished product or the relatively finished product. So this was the, no, please, oh yeah. So this was somehow the, the finished uh, products. It's like a, a calendar with uh, 12 months and the whole uh, days of the month, 30 days of the month. And we have like a different uh, shade of acrylic that you can uh, do for a certain types of tasks. Maybe we have here yet the yellow for the public holidays. 
uh, yeah, uh, and behind each uh, day, the, there is like the LEDs that I showed you uh, previously, and this is, uh, yeah, and this was, I think, a test with everything assembled. I'm not sure if you can see, see it or not. Yes. Yeah, so it was nice um, experience, and uh, I, I like the, the whole aesthetic of the, the project uh, with the acrylic and the colors. This was a photo of, uh, of Olivier showing me how uh, wiring works, and the, on the right, I, I, I don't remember his name, but next to the, the Fab Lab, there is like a working space, and because it's like a small town, uh, a lot of people comes to this uh, workspace and work, and sometimes they come to the workshop where I work and have, and because they are all working in some IT or uh, computer science uh, jobs, so they understand uh, coding. So a lot of times some people come and, and tell me, ah, okay, this work this way and this work that way. So it was a really nice um, sense of uh, community that uh, I like. Amazing. Thank yeah. you for the pictures. Yeah. Was there was a like a crazy test. So, oh, nice. Another one. <laughs> yeah. So, this, like a, this make one, some videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a really a nice prototype and it's opened my mind to maybe uh, develop it more. So, yeah. So do you have any ideas regarding that already? Um, because it was yeah. the first time that you were also doing the coding, right? So do you have more ideas also regarding that? Idea regarding the coding or the, the, the calendar itself? Two questions in one. <laughs> so <it's... laughs> Sorry. What's the question again? Sorry. No, so uh, first of all, you can let us know um, what you want to improve or how you want to take the calendar further. And then yeah. as a second question, if you want to, if you have more ideas now, um, instead of just just working with uh, wood to also use more of your coding st skills that you've de developed. Yes. Yeah. Um, I will start with the second question. Yeah, I have a lot of ideas, but I don't know how to implement i know everything uh, hardware uh, uh you know, the hardware part of it i know how to do it and i have already in in, in germany for example you have like uh, in berlin like the the advertising uh, what do you call it signage that rotates mm -hmm. like it's a paper that rotates it's really nice and that I, I took a little picture of it and, try, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm aiming to, to create like a miniature version of it with uh, motors yeah. and Arduino. So this was one of the ideas that I, I got visiting there. So, so I have a lot of ideas regarding like uh, a window shutter that, uh, that a very simple thing to open automating, automatically open and, and close. So this idea, small ideas that I, I'm, I'm aiming to, it's on my schedule now to, to, to make like uh, these, uh, <laughs> These are doing the projects. Yeah, and how to improve the project? Yeah, it's too big. Yeah, yeah, and it's very, very big. So I'm trying, I'm trying to think about how can I make it smaller, and at the same time you can uh, write on it. This is the the, the main thing. And the other thing, uh, there is like limit, uh, unlimited uh, ideas in my mind to how to utilize the LED. So I want to utilize the LED to to be like as minimal as possible. At the same time, to be very expressive on, on, on how you can uh, use it. So, for example, it's it has like an RGB color, so it has all the colors. So I was trying because it's too hot now in Egypt, like very, very hot, like 40 or 41 Celsius. So I, I thought about why why can't I embed like an an, an temperature alert uh, on the calendar to to say like yeah these days are very very hot, so it will blink like uh, maybe red wow. or something. So in, in an animation way. But yeah, these all are ideas. I know visually how, how it will work, but I don't know what how the code will, will be. So this is the idea. How, how who can I work with to, to achieve this? How can or can I can I learn this um, or not? I know that I can, but it's it's too intimidating to me. But yeah, <laughs> seeing Olivier and all the guys working with it made it less intimidating. 
But do you have plans to continue working with them together on your code, for example? Like, uh, yeah, we, are you in exchange with them still? Yeah, we're actually doing this right now. So uh, I'm working <laughs> with Olivier and uh, Louis. Uh, so he, Louis uh, offered that he can work with us on this code. So he did, he did a, a little... Uh, a little test and Olivier uh, is doing, but I'm in the middle and I didn't understand anything. So I'm trying to make, <laughs> so, okay, guys, can you just explain this part to me or not? So it's it's a very funny situation. <laughs> okay, but that's very cool ideas and nice to hear that you're still in touch with them because this is exactly the point of this exchange, right? Exactly. You yeah. not only stay there for the four weeks, but to continue collaborating mm -hmm. and creating, yeah. And I think this, uh, yeah, the the the, the more uh, interesting part of the MIR is the networking and meeting new people. So in the in, in the when I, I finished the, the when I was there in in France, so uh, uh, some people contacted Olivier and Oho, which were the the owners of the Fab Lab, uh, because they are trying to uh, create like uh, a YouTube channel about uh, making and about DIY. So the uh, Olivier con connected us. And I, I gave them like uh, my experience in making videos, and some of the one of them have like works in a in a, a fab lab in Paris. So I went there and I saw like the, a three D printed three D printer that works with clay. So it was really really nice to see this uh, machine in action. So it it is, was really a really interesting uh, networking experience. Nice, and this probably also answers uh, a question of Andrews. <laughs> what you were able to share with them and for them to learn about uh, yeah. or from you. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions from the group? If yeah. not, yeah, I would hand over to Claudia. <laughs> I have one no, question. I have... Yeah, sorry. Uh, how do you, how do you portray your maker uh, activities or how do you show then on your YouTube channel? How do you use this this as a tool for your like make a work? Um, I don't think I understand my question. How how I used what? Your YouTube channel? Yes, I'm a YouTuber, indeed. Yes, how you use it for your making activities, makering, make how how is it yeah. a tool? it changes what do you portray yeah uh, so i make a, a youtube uh, videos about the process um i, I still do not understand the question so uh, how does it portray what okay uh can you hear me can someone hear me okay um the question and explain it me to me in a, in yeah. a simpler English, please. Yeah, English... there's quite a bunch. There's quite a but it's not my native language. I, I would explain very well in a native Portuguese, but unfortunately, I have to use this strange language that has have five time tenses. <laughs> I have 25 in my language. Imagine for me. So there's quite a bunch of makers all around the globe. Yes. This quite bunch of makers try to access public, to, to teach children, to go into schools. But this huge amount of makers around the globe, they don't have nice YouTube channels. They yeah. don't use TikToks and this kind of things, you know? So for me, what, what interests me a lot is that you are someone in the maker universe that you call yourself an influencer, a YouTuber or whatever. Yeah, not an influencer, a YouTuber, yeah. Yeah, okay. So my my question or my... Mm, it's not even a question. My What I want to get inspiration from, you know, it's how you use it pedagogically, how you access your public, how is the kind of interaction you get with them, what this tool called the YouTube and the way you use it, how do you think it can... Uh, get good outcomes for makers all around the globe that you listen to this YouTube video in the future. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, um, I think I understood your question. Uh, so how, uh, 
when I, I created my YouTube channel, I was before that I was watching a lot of a lot of you, other YouTuber YouTuber and makers that who, who, who made the stuff and film it and that's where I, I, I got the inspiration to make stuff and this is what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to 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 tell people that if I can do it with no background in woodworking and anything, you can do it. So this is the, the whole idea about my videos is to tell people or to enable people to to say, yeah, he did it. I can did it also. So so it, this is what I'm trying to do. So I hope I answered my question. So well, sometimes when, when, when people telling me that, yeah, that's too good, I can't do this. I tell them, no, no, that's not the, the idea about my videos. That's the complete opposite. So I, 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 I could do it because I did one, two, three, and I, I, I told you, I bought the, the wood from this place and I then I went to this place and this place and this place. And sometimes I didn't, I know how to do this and I make a lot of mistake. And I tell that in the video and I tell them, okay, this is what I'm tried. I've tried to do this and this, and this works and this doesn't. So it's like a pure uh, honest experience. This is what I'm trying to do. And this is what I'm trying to, to tell people that, yeah, you can do it also. Thank you. Super answer my question. Uh, I shared a channel for a YouTube from Brazil, YouTuber from Brazil. She's yeah. a, he is a maker, he and she. They're, they're, it's a couple. I don't know if they are married or not, but whatever. Uh, they have like 11 years now and they started just like the way you are. You know, okay. like testing and creating. They say, no, we are makers, we can do. And nowadays, as you see, they have like 16 million subscribers and they do, wow. for example, at the same time, they show how things work. They, they go into the oil company to show how oil is produced, but they also show how you can do whatever in your home and things like this, you know. I just want to congratulate you for using YouTube. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> You are muted, Fajr. Still can't hear you. <laughs> Still muted. Okay. Uh, can hear you now. Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah, but your voice is too low. So if you can use just the laptop mic, it would be. Uh... Yeah, it's crazy. We are in 2024 and Zoom doesn't figure out how to connect or to audio correctly. I have this, <laughs> this earbuds and the laptop and I can't, so it's crazy. Yeah, Faria has left. <laughs> oh, no. And Ricardo also has a lot of people. <laughs> Now I see only a black screen for Faria. It's a bit weird. Yeah, it's a frozen uh, it's Ah, it turns black because I never use Zoom. So I'm a beginner. <laughs> mm, no, we lost her. Hello, can you hear me? Ah, now you're back, yes. Yes, perfect. Uh, I just, uh, I was going to ask if there are any more questions before we come to an end of today's session. But I also, I see we have with us um, Gildas, if you would like to also uh, um, ask questions or maybe tell us your interest into coming to the community call today. Matthew, Mustafa, all of you guys were here and still haven't spoken. 
Um, what's your general feelings, your comments about the great experience that both Witness and Awesome has shared with us? Afshir. Maybe I can go. Okay. Uh, thank you, Fadia, and all uh, members here. Uh, it's so interesting, you know, to to listen to, to such uh, feedback of the makers and residents, um, participants. Uh, you know, I have learned a lot from this meeting. And 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 my Maya was like uh, <clears throat> this program, you know, should continue and more people from maker spaces uh could be able to to join and as well learn. Yeah. Uh especially as for me, I've been hearing a lot of uh the lesser cutter, uh the 3D printer. I saw it, but of course. Uh, its application, I did not uh, use it in any way. Yeah. So uh, this is quite interesting. And I, I just um, thought that maybe uh, when this program, maybe you get, uh, get more fundings, you know, for such programs to happen so that. Uh, more makers can visit places, other maker spaces and learn as well, because uh, it is a very good initiative for knowledge exchange among maker spaces and see how even maker spaces are being structured and what other unique things do they do. Yeah. So uh, as for me, like any other growing maker space, uh, as for our maker space, of course, this is a great uh, initiative for learning and uh, hope that this continues. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. We also hope that it continues. And this leads me also, maybe Kristen also has something to add since you've worked so hard for the past months on this. And uh, I just want to say that as I heard the stories and heard uh, our beautiful makers speak of their experience, I was thinking of the many layers that this uh, could also unfold into, right? Like it could be um, uh, residencies that are developed for specifically to help maker spaces or help makers in certain parts of the world to develop specific projects. And for this, maybe the residency would take different length time-wise, different uh, ways of, of um, reaching maker spaces and makers. Uh, I was thinking also there is maybe the non-technical element of it, right? Like this community element that could be very interesting for makerspace, makerspaces to, to visit each other. So it's less about makers visiting makerspaces and more about makerspaces and makerspaces, community managers to see what kind of activation happens within the spaces, what kind of work. Um, uh, maybe also, I don't know, there are so many layers of exchanges that could help, in my opinion, the ecosystem thrive since it's relatively a new ecosystem and it's an ecosystem that has so much potential to an extent that I think I was on a call with Andrew last week and he said something about um, the next industrial revolution will be made by makerspaces. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could also say this and we could also think in terms of how could we actually make this um, a reality and how could we empower um, these spaces and, and, and makers and everyone involved in these spaces um, to progress. Um, I would like Kristen to say something at the very end since it's the last couple of minutes if, if you want Kristen but maybe before this uh, Mustafa you can go okay so thank you very much okay thank you very much Padia for the opportunity uh, I just have a very quick one for uh, the makers and everyone here I think uh, this is so interesting to see what other makers are also doing somewhere else. And uh, I would 
I would want us to keep the connection so that we can also collaborate on some of these uh, projects the makers are doing, especially with a uh, witness project. Uh, Ugali, Ugali, it's like a, a food eaten in East Africa. We have a, a version of it called fufu here in Ghana. We prepare this fufu here by hand. I think uh, in the local makers are trying to make machines that pound the fufu. It's just like Ugali. So there's a common, uh, I mean, there's a common goal between what we are doing here and what she's also trying to do. So some of these projects are uh, things that we can also jump on and then uh, put on some collaborative efforts with what we're already doing here. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mustafa. The good news is uh, that we have both our makers and other two other ma makers will introduce uh, their work and themselves in the next couple of weeks. All four uh, makers will be part of GIG, will join us, so they will be with us uh, on our communication channels. And I personally look forward to see um, how you guys connect. Please reach out to me or Nadia if you want to connect in ways and you don't know how. We're happy to help and see how you can also help our new members onboard to our network. So this is also another um, layer that we are thinking about. So um, with this, Kristen, would you like to say something? Would you like to contribute? Yeah, sure. To I mean, I could just say uh, thank you so much to uh, Fabian for um, hosting the call as well. And it was great to see Witness and Awesome again. Um, awesome, welcome back home. So, uh, you know. <laughs> thank you. Are you so cold? Where are you? Yes, I mean, Cape Town is freezing. It's freezing. It's been raining for like days and days and days. It's flooding everywhere. So it's cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was great to have the conversation with everybody. We were also with the Gig Network and the Make Network share the videos of uh, the experiences from Awesome and Witness so you can get a bit of an insight into the experience um, when that's ready to be shared and launched. Um, and thank you, Fadia, for hosting the community call with Make and the Makers in Residency today. So, yep, thank you very much. Amazing. I think with this, we can come to the end of our call. I want to say that this is only part one, and we'll have another amazing discussion that is supposed to be held uh, in two weeks. So it's on the 7th, or originally planned for the 7th, but it, we might change the date. So please stay tuned. Please come to the next one so we can meet uh, both Leonard and Martina, uh, who are also amazing people, to tell us more about their exciting experience. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Asin. I love Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.